empowerment. Ooh, love that word. What does empowerment mean to you, Adriana Smith? Yeah, so so this is um yeah, this this is a loaded word. <laughs> Um, this is a phase in the journey where we combine mindset and skills. Mm -hmm. This is where we get to transcend to a whole other level because it, through this phase, we pick up new tools mm -hmm. uh, for managing life. Um, and we gain know-how. And we stretch beyond the, you know, there's transformation that occurs up here with informational, what's the word? I call it informational transformation because in the beginning, we, we need to process new information in order to um, change the way that we perceive things. But if that, transformation never gets to the level of our habits <laughs> and our day-to-day -day life then we're not fully empowered nice. and we're just spinning around up here yeah so we don't want that uh, in order for transformation to be complete we need to um, allow the process to I guess descend into our bodies and into our habits and into our rhythm of life Nice. So one of the ways that we do this is by looking at the lessons of our lives through our anger wisdom. Mm -hmm. And this, especially for women, is something we've avoided all our lives. But if we were willing to really sit with ourselves and map out the most angry incidents of our lives that have brought us the greatest anger um, and if we were really honest with ourselves there were immense lessons offered to us right. during those times and in order for us to find our voice which is our power as women we need to be willing to sit with that anger we need to call it up we need to spend time with it and to let it express itself and be what it is yeah we get to it's a yeah. Yeah. absolutely yeah. it's actually a privilege just as you say Linda because one of the greatest teachers for us is our anger mm -hmm. and rather than constantly sweep it under the carpet which you know finds its way out into our lives anyhow in the ways that we jeopardize ourselves and our relationships yep. um, rather than do that why don't we invite it make it safe um, offer it a channel for expression and ask for the lesson out of each incident so uh, that to me is a very valuable conversation and again you know, when I work with clients, it's a safe space because there's that permission. Yeah. You know, I, I enjoy offering that because it's something I've always sought in my life. And there is a safe way to allow our anger to teach us. Yeah. So if, if we can gain the, glean the, the lesson out of it, then we don't have to be afraid of anger. No. And sometimes that's just the ticket, you know the nudge or whatever that somebody else is like giving us permission you know that's just so in the human <laughs> anyways like we talked about someone you know waiting for them to die again yeah. so it's important to be working with a, a coach or a guide that is like hey, you know i'm giving you permission to do this and it's like ah oh, okay you know and once somebody's doing that then it, you can take it on to do it for yourself as you move forward, right? That's right, that's right. So I never want to say to someone, um, you know, you can't do this work alone. The truth of it is, is that you can do it and you should do it alone. But if you have someone at a critical juncture, mm -hmm. all you need is a little bit of guidance. You, need, you sometimes just need that extra support at, at a, an important time 
And once you get the hang of it, you absolutely can do it all on your own. You absolutely should do it on your own because it's your prerogative. Yeah, um, sometimes you just feel stuck. You're not really stuck. We're never stuck. It's all about remembering because we came in all powerful. That's right. It is about remembering. And, and I know a lot of that, you do a lot of that work with uh, women who run with the world's um, project that you do because it, it just comes into that conversation so nicely. Um, but it is so important that we uh, give ourselves the opportunity to explore that. Especially as women. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. I love your word, anger, wisdom. Tell us just a little bit more. Like, you know, how did that word even come into your vocabulary? It's your word, and it's cool. Tell well, us Linda, you know, um, you and I both come from the, the Christian tradition of being raised in the church. Mm -hmm. And not just any church, but you know, in the evangelical tradition, you know how women um, are really discouraged from expressing anger and, and strong emotion. And anger wisdom was an idea that made it possible for me to embrace, um, I guess the worth of that experience, it seemed to me I reached a point in life where I had to shed those kinds of uh, traditions because they no longer served me. Yeah, right. And in order to do that, I had to make it okay for myself to go on a new journey and get in touch with the anger. And so there was a time for me where I had no guidance and anger was my teacher. So, um, and, and my willingness to sit with the discomfort of that mess, mm -hmm. um, I, I gained a lot of wisdom and I started writing it down. And after that, I realized we can all experience this if we give, give ourselves permission to. And wouldn't it be wonderful to invite more women into this journey? Um, and I, I do believe that every woman, you know, it's such an intimate feature mm -hmm. because there is no, no more specific, like every woman is angry about different things and that pertain to her specific story. Right. So, um, what better teacher can there be? Yeah, right. <laughs> and, and now, now the trick with this has been for me is because you know bitterness can also set in. What can so, bitterness, which is what a lot of us are taught, you know, stay away from anger because then you become this ugly person. <laughs> All right. So a lot of us women would opt for depression. Yeah, right? Because that's more socially acceptable. Mm -hmm. There you go. Sad. Sad. Very sad. <laughs> we, we, we put ourselves through immense pain. We turn the pain inward on ourselves. And we submit to, to depression. Yeah. Rather than embrace the wisdom that anger has to bring us. So in a, in a healthy way, in a wisdom way, we give anger the voice that it needs to tell us about something that's most valuable to us because behind anger is a value. Mm, I like it. Mm -hmm. That is the wisdom. Um, every incident of anger reveals to us something that we deeply value that is being uh, threatened. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah of it that way that yes really so once we we sit with it that's the whole objective is to glean that and once we determine what the value is then we say it, it, here's a great example let's say um my husband and i are having an argument which really rarely ever happens <laughs> um but when it does 
Um, and if, if we start to flare up at each other, that's an invitation to look beyond the anger and to say, this is pointing to something I value. So if I give myself an opportunity, I get to say in, in a conversation, you know what really means a lot to me, hon? Oh. This means a lot to me. And this is what I want for both of us to experience more than anything else. And then when, when I get to do that, everything falls to the wayside. All the non-important, non-essentials fall to the wayside because all of a sudden we've honored what's most valuable and we get to bring that to the forefront. Yeah. But if we never give ourselves the chance to do that with anger, then we miss the tender, juicy morsel behind it that is the value. Wow. So that's anger wisdom. I love that. Because when you were talking about the anger, I immediately went to what's under the anger. Because like with my now husband, <laughs> uh, when we were moving to Connecticut and we took two cars out and I was following him and um, he, <laughs> he hadn't booked the hotel room. And so we get to New York on New Year's Eve with no hotel wow. room. <laughs> We from Minnesota. We were tired, and we had two crazy kids that we had left with my mom on top of it. So we were exhausted young parents, anyways. So we we pull into a gas station, and he gets it figured out where we're going next, and then he just takes off and goes there. And I am sitting in this dark area, you know, at a gas station, the only lights, and it's like. I don't know where he is. That's not the day of cell phones, you know. And That's right. That's right. I, you know, ended up figuring it out on my own. But after that, when I tell that story, like, I will never forgive him for that. You know? And then um, it's like, and I did. But yeah. it was years. It was. And it was like, so not, and what was under that, right? Well, that yeah. was abandonment. And you know, yeah. I left my father to suicide between junior and senior year of high school. That's abandonment. So, yeah. it's like, okay, abandonment. Then you're bringing up this value, and it's like, okay, what are my values? Fun yeah. and of love. Yeah, that wasn't very fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had no freedom because I didn't know where to go. I had all this freedom, but I didn't have freedom. Kind of like, I'm thirsty, but I'm floating in the ocean right now. Yeah. In the water. And then love, he must not love me if he's just going to ditch me in the middle of the night when I'm exhausted. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. I felt so cool, Adriana. 